What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Cooper Stuff. All right, I know I can't let this stupid Sound of Freedom stuff go. It is absolutely insane to me um, to see the response of people. I just want to, as we're getting started, I just want to say, I don't get any money for talking about Sound of Freedom. There is absolutely nothing in it for me. I don't know these people that made this film, but but it's just so absolutely bizarre. And so I was texting a sort of uh, a friend of mine. I guess we don't know each other very well, but I texted him. I said, I want to get some more people's uh, thoughts on this. So I'm so very pumped up to have David Harris Jr. join the show. David, say hello. Tell people who you are, what you do. Hey, John, so good to be on with you, my brother. And, uh, you know, we're brothers. Uh, we may not talk a lot, but we do chat. I know when I connected with you out in uh, North Carolina, I think it was, North South Carolina at the, the sawmill for that event. Uh, I, I, I appreciated your stance. I see your boldness. Um, uh, you and your bride, you're just you're, you're necessary and uh, you're you're so needed, especially in the area that you're in in music to be the icons that you are. Um, in music and to have that pour from a pure a place of purity in your heart uh, and a place of servanthood from uh, from who you who you are and how you see people uh, and then trying to reach people with even more truth and, and try to you know bridge the gap and, and cross the sectors you know a lot of people I, I know a lot of you know people celebrities that are that are you know uh, in music and some of them just they don't want to talk about it it's like it's funny if they if they if their heart is in the right place or as far as you know they're they're on the right side of of history, uh, unfortunately, they, they may not be doing as much as they could be or should be doing in the fight. But if they're not woke, if you will, you know, if they're not totally just spouting off the propaganda, you know, Kool-Aid that comes out of CNN, MSNBC and, and ABC and pretty much all the woke uh, news channels, if they're, if they're not doing that, they'll just stay silent. They'll just be quiet about it. They'll just kind of back off and, and won't ruffle any feathers. And they won't they won't even you know, they don't want to do my podcast because then that will put them in a certain light that'll make other people look at them and be like, man, I didn't know you believed that guy or trusted that guy or listened to that guy or whatever. And, you know, I'm the guy that's just trying to shine light and shine truth <laughs> and expose the darkness. But, you know, I'm painted as the white supremacist leader, of the KKK, depending on who you're you know, who you're listening to, you know, and if your viewers are listening, well, I've got a lot of melanin in my skin. So uh, I've never been called a white guy. Um, but, uh, my dad's black. My mom was, is white. So, uh, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm that milk chocolate, but, uh, I just so appreciate your ability, your desire and your courage to have somebody like me on and for you to stay what you, what you say on social media and just be that shining uh, light that you are with the platform that you have. It's so important. I, I think that when, when we get to heaven, you know, part of, uh, you know, part of, uh, well done, thou good and faithful servant is going to be, did you utilize the platform that I gave you to help shine light, spread the truth and fight the darkness? Mm. Or, or did you just uh, gain a lot of comfort, personal comfort from that platform and then, you know, relegate back to your shell of complacency? Right. And so I know you're not doing that. I know you're powerful in that fight. And that's just who I am. That's what I do. You know, I, 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 I started to rise in the whole social media game after 2016 when Trump and Hillary were on the debate stage. And as soon as the debate was over, um, as, a, as a Christian, as a husband, as a father, as a business owner, and it's in that order, and I put it in that order. And then as a member of the Black community, my identity is not in my skin color, right? Our, our identities are in Christ first and foremost, but uh, mm -hmm. my identity is not in my skin color. Uh, I just hopped on social media. I had maybe 1,500 friends, and I just poured my heart out as to what I felt was at stake based on that that upcoming election in 16 between Trump and Hillary, and uh, it just went viral. It went crazy viral, and my inbox was flooded with messages from men, women, Black, Asian, Hispanic, white, you name it. There was a lot of hate mail in there, but a lot of the positive messages that I received from people were a, a theme that I continued to to read in these in these DMs were I'm a Democrat, my whole family are Democrats, and I was going to vote for Hillary until I watched your video. And mm. It was a very pro life message. Uh, it was the next president's going to pick two, maybe th three Supreme Court justices, and that of itself, in and of itself, will have generational impact. If Hillary had been in office, we already know Trump got to appoint three. Hillary would have appointed three Supreme Court justices. 
the the woke liberal progressive left would have a stranglehold right now on the Supreme Court, probably seven to two. It, it's six to three, seven to two, somewhere in there. So uh, it, yeah, it's, it's tough uh, to imagine. It's tough to imagine the kind of religious persecution that could be happening now had things turned out differently. That's for sure. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, I, well, I appreciate that's that. That's when it started. It, I didn't know that story. That's really fast. Fascinating. I didn't, I had no idea. So it's very uh, kind of you to say, and, and, and likewise. So, I mean, I want to ask you this you, and your shirt for people that can't, can't, that are only listening, they can't say, leave the kids alone by God, leave the kids alone. I cannot believe, I mean, I am no conspiracy theorist guy. I am a na- I'm naive about most things. There's been a few things in my, my career that I've stumbled upon that I found out, oh my gosh, I'm in the middle of some sort of culture war that I didn't even know was a culture war. And one of them is this Sound of Freedom film. And I just cannot understand the incredible pushback. I mean, of these articles coming out from The Guardian and Rolling Stone, The Sound of Freedom, it, you know, which is a, people I'm saying Sound of Freedom basically is this uh, f- uh, based on true story. Tim Ballard rescues his, these kids out of sex slavery. It's true based on a real story. And they're calling it QAnon and all this other stuff. And I just want to know while I got you for a few minutes. What is this all about, man? Break it down for me. Well, it's very interesting. Um, I actually, uh, I have a podcast as well. It's David J. Harris Jr. Podcast. You got to have that J in there. But David J. Harris Jr. Podcast. And uh, I was just talking about this specific thing with uh, a very good friend of mine, Yako Buyans, who's been fighting sex trafficking for 28 years. Uh, his sister was trafficked and it took them oh, six wow. years to find her. And that was in South Africa. And then he, they came to the United States, and for the last 20 years, he's been fighting it in the United States. And he actually pointed out to me, I, I, I've heard, and I've read the, the article, Rolling Stones, when they, they you know, the, the, the writer likened the people that wanted to watch it, you know, people that are liking conspiracy theories, they're QAnon crazies, basically, and, and specifically, he said men with brain worms, right, mm-hmm. like worms for brains, basically, he's just, he's demeaning men, and Yako said this, and I hadn't thought of this, so I got to give him credit. Um, he said it was very specific that they were attacking men in a manner to try to get men not to engage. That is interesting. They don't want the men that are masculine men. They don't want the men to engage in this conversation because they want to displace us. They want masculine men. They want men to not be in the fight and not be in the conversation the same way they don't want men to be in the conversation about abortion. It's not mm. your body. It's not your choice. Well, half of the DNA is mine. Mm. The baby did the egg just didn't get, uh, you know, inoculated by itself is <laughs> my, took my sperm yet men somehow don't have a say so in the equation and abortion is, has ran rampant in this country. So, uh, the evil, and then my personal take is the evil underbelly of so much of what's behind the music industry, Hollywood, uh, movies, all the entertainment, which we've seen little bits of it with Harvey Weinstein. You know, he ain't the only one. He, he's a part of a network. Um, Jeffrey Epstein, a part of a network. Where's the Ep- Where's Epstein's list? There's a whole lot of powerful people that are 100% complicit in, is, is it, is your, is your, can I say what I want here? I don't cuss, but, yeah. I, but I like to be direct. Yes. <clears throat> There's a whole lot of powerful men that are complicit in sexually exploiting, kidnapping, and raping children. And they don't want to be exposed. They don't want the heat on them. So this movie, it widens it. It, it tears the lid off, if you will. People cannot, you can't unsee it. Once you realize it's happening at the level that it's happening, over a hundred billion dollars a year, more than the NBA, the NFL, uh, the uh, the uh, NFL, the, the NBA and NBL, Major League Baseball combined and growing, John, and growing. When you when, when a person understands that that's taking place and at the level that it's taking place, you can't unsee it. And, and so there are very powerful people that are taking their marching orders or they're giving marching orders 
to the people that are writing the articles, trying to downplay it to, to hopefully try to keep the lid on as much as possible. But the lid's got to come off. We, we've got to we've got to rip the lid off and then keep going. There's more. So they so they're in, in your opinion, they know it's happening and they are saying it's not happening just to make it go away. And they know that people on their side of the aisle, unfortunately, this country is no longer split between <laughs> religious and non-religious people. It's split between but this political parties that are totally it's, it's it's bananas. They know that there's a certain amount of people on their side of the aisle that will just believe whatever they say. Is that what that's what you're saying? The, yeah, the battle is between good and evil, John. And, and I'll put it to you like I, this. I agree with that. Absolutely. It, it's re, it's really it should be really simple, right? For the for the average adult, right? For the average adult, it should be really simple. When should an adult talk to a child that's not their own child? I'm talking five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 15, 8, 17, right? A child, a minor. When is it okay for an adult to talk to a child about sex? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's if right. If somebody out there is saying, well, you know, I'm not talking about a doctor, I'm not talking, even a teacher. Teachers are not supposed to talk to kids about sex unless mm -hmm. it's a you know sexual ed class. And then even then there's specific things. It's like a they're speaking to the whole room. They're not talking to one child. It is not okay for an adult to talk to a child about sex. There's laws in this country against it. Same way there's laws in this country against uh, you know, somebody flashing themselves that we see up in Canada. Well, it's illegal unless you're carrying a pride flag. Then you can flash yeah. all the kids yeah. you want. It's insane. <laughs> it is. It's insane. literally a battle between good and evil. And the veil of darkness, mm. the veil of deceit, John, is, is on the minds of unbelievers, but it's on the minds of a lot of people, even believers that don't understand or aren't aware of the depths, the level, the very strategic level that this darkness is going to try to strangle, literally strangle the voices of the parents and control the kids. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, it's very sinister. Well, I, you know, I and, think, and I, and I appreciate you saying it's my opinion, but if it, it, it's my, it's my opinion that I, that I got from again, Yako, who's an expert in this, it's his facts because he's taken it from actual cases, literal cases that are mm -hmm. in court with the proof. So that the very powerful people, networks of people, Try to think, downplay what's taking place in order to keep what they're doing hidden. I, I think what I think that your your average American person <laughs> just doesn't believe that this is this is possible. I think we don't. I think it's because we don't want to. We don't want to imagine it could possibly be that bad. And mm -hmm. if these people, their reaction, their reaction to this has made me a belief. I mean, I already kind of, I already, in other words, I'm not a moron. I, I knew a lot of this, but they are making me think this is way worse than I ever would have imagined it being. And that these people are complicit in it because they like, like even at the end of the film, they're showing actual footage of Tim Ballard, you know, and, in, in, in Congress giving testimony and then Rolling Stone and Guardian and all these uh, outlets Come on, acting like we're making all this up. We have the tapes to prove that he was there doing it. They are making me think that this is so much worse than it could have been. And I think you're absolutely right. We tie this into the crazy, don't say gay bill, as they call it, down in Florida, because they want to teach your kids transgender theory and the whole the sexualization of the children, the drag queen stuff. All of this stuff is involved and these people are making, they're making a believer out of me. I'll tell you what, I, this is so much worse than I could have thought it would be. And so, but what I'm getting at is what can we do to help wake up your typical American person that just couldn't believe this is, this is even possibly true. They could never imagine it happening. What do we need to do to continue, as you said, to pull the, you know, to, the covering off, if you will. Well, what you're doing, John, what you're doing is is 100% what, what everybody that has any level of influence, that has any platform whatsoever, it's something they should all be doing. Uh, they should all be encouraging people to go see the movie, The Sound of Freedom. That's where it starts. It's awareness. It's understanding what is taking place and, and not being persuaded by, 
you know, add, add to the list of the Guardian and, and Rolling Stone magazine at CNN and Media Matters, literally Media Matters came out with the same type of uh, uh, downgrading, you know, disregarding of the movie as conspiracy and all this. Uh, and I'm glad to hear the reaction that you say you have have had where you hear them trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, dis, dis, dissociate people and get discourage people from watching the film. And, and they're going to oh, wait a minute. I know it's based on a true story and they're they're trying to say it's fake. Maybe it's a lot worse. John, it is a lot worse. It's a lot worse. That movie scratched the surface. Um, so but that's number one is watch the film. Number two uh spread awareness right encourage other people to watch the film we need the hearts of americans to be torn in half my 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 heart was just ripped in half over and over again i think i just saw that you posted you went and watched it right how, how many yeah, times did right. your heart just get ripped in half during yeah the film? It's, it's it's absolutely brutal i mean it's so and they did a, i will say artistically i thought they did a brilliant job because they didn't show anything it, it's not over the line it's not right. But they did it in a way where you're feeling it. I mean, you, yeah. you're you're feeling it, and you're you're just like, and I mean, we've seen you know, remember uh, Taken, Liam yeah. Neeson Taken, you know, and he goes and he throat punches you know everybody in France. You know, every adult male gets throat punched. <laughs> um, which we I will already, find you. Yeah, I will find you. Which is such a, I mean, such an, an an awesome film. But I don't remember any of these outlets saying that it was a QAnon conspiracy. I don't remember them right? saying they're making up stuff. And that was obviously a fiction film. This film is believable. And I think that's what's so I'm watching it saying, well, this could happen. I mean, th this rescue story could actually happen. And it it's just so demented what is what is going on. And I feel like and I think you're going to amen me on this. Well, I know you're going to amen me on this, but I kind of feel like I want to say to a lot of my Christian friends or even my non-Christian friends who who's, who also hate child tra trafficking tons of them who who shouldn't hate who who shouldn't hate exactly any exactly. child being, if there's uh, anything we can get taken. on board with yeah. exactly and then so held against their will and then taken advantage of in any way especially sexually who who shouldn't who wouldn't uh, and that's what this response is making me like oh my gosh you are you guys somehow supporting this? But I just want to say to people, I want to, I want to challenge people who say, I want to end this sex trafficking, it's this and this, but who also watch pornography. You know, I've been reading some things about this linkage between porn use and the rise of trafficking. I don't yep. know a, I don't know a ton about it, but enough I've I've read enough and it just makes it makes sense to me biblically. So I think that biblically, I'm like, yeah, you're you're feeding the beast here, and the beast is getting hungry and hungry and hungrier. So I just want to say, people out there that want to do something in their ordinary lives, we've got to put this pornography stuff to death. Even the numbers yes. in the church is so absolutely outrageous that is so against New Testament Christian life. So I want to throw that out there. But um, well, I'll amen that. And then I'll, I'll add this to it. You're 100% right. You're 100% correct. Every every uh, every agency, and I've gotten from Victor Marx, who's been fighting sexual trafficking of children um, for 20 years, Yako, 28 years. They all say the same thing, John, that pornography opens the door. It opens the door. And once the once the individual, young, young man, man, whatever, once they open that door and keep feeding that beast, that beast wants more and more and more and younger and younger and younger of of a uh, of a individual that they're watching uh, to the point where then they're acting it out and then there's a whole there's a whole underbelly for all of it. So you're a hundred percent right. You know, I, I I hang my hat on the promises of God, and in in Second Chronicles the the promise that says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then it's an if then you don't get the then without the if if mm -hmm, you do right. all those things and turn from your wicked ways then i will hear from heaven i will forgive your sins and i will heal your land and i've been sharing this on podcasts a, a ton i actually came out with a children's book last uh the beginning of the other month so i've been on a ton of podcasts and shows the last two weeks uh promoting the children's book which i might as well show and promote a town worth defending uh, I partner with Brave Books. You can go to bravebooks.com. You can check it out. But I've been doing a ton. But every every interview I have, I have an opportunity to talk about the sickness that is plaguing our country. 
the sickness that we need healed from is this sexual perversion. Uh, and it's something that believers, I know mo- most of your audience are probably believers. Some may not be, but they honor you and respect you. Believers, as you said, must take asking for forgiveness and doing away with wickedness, which is pornography. They've got to do that. We've got to do that. And if we understand that if, if we're feeding that beast at all, giving it attention, well, then it's going to get more attention. You, you, Whatever you feed grows. Somebody's feeding it, it's going to grow. They're, they're, they're adding to it. They're complicit in the entirety of all of it. Maybe they're not the ones, maybe you're watching, you're not the one that's doing those things to actual kids, but you're feeding the very beast that does. Mm, yeah. Got to in the church. Come on. Chop now. off, literally cut it off. The beast of pornography, ask for forgiveness, get help and understand that you, you, you don't want to feed the beast that is doing this to these children. So I believe if we do that, when we do that and we unite and do that, then God will heal, uh, heal our land and our land, our country needs to be healed from this sick, evil, twisted, demented virus um, that is yes. sexual trafficking of children. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am super excited to tell you about a new sponsor, something I feel very passionate about, all right? There are a lot of companies out there that are not fighting for you, your marriage, your faith, or your family. You know that's true, and it's getting worse every day. But there is one company that is on your side, Covenant Eyes. Covenant Eyes was founded right here in the USA, and for the past 22 years, they've walked with over 1.5 million people toward a porn-free life. I know it's going to get uncomfortable. Every time you say the word pornography, people get very uncomfortable. Listen, we have got to get rid of this addiction in the church. I have known far too many people that struggle with this, and Covenant Eyes is going to help you. Check this out. This is tearing apart American lives, marriages, families, you know it. It even shipwrecks people's faith because they feel shame. They don't want to be a part of a church. They don't feel like they belong or they don't live in the light and they hide it. And then they're dealing with this addiction all the time. All right. Look at the divorce rate, the brokenness of families, um, shame, this and the other. Thankfully, Covenant Eyes is here to help you live a porn free life and will bring you a new freedom to live honestly. With Covenant Eyes, you choose a trusted friend or family member to help you remain accountable on your devices so you're not alone in the journey. So it's not some stranger. This is something that you do with someone else, all right? Right now, you can try Covenant Eyes free for 30 days. This is an awesome deal. Free for 30 days, a free 30-day trial so you can see for yourself and you can protect your family as a bonus. So it's not just you. You can put it on multiple devices, but maybe with your kids, um, spouse, hug, whatever your situation is. All right. Visit covenanteyes.com and make sure you enter the promo code Cooper, C-O-O-P-E-R. Make sure you enter promo code Cooper or you're not going to get the free trial. All right. So go to covenanteyes.com, enter Cooper as the promo code and start your free trial. You guys, we have to put this thing to death. I'm very passionate about this in the church, and I want to help you, and Covenant Eyes wants to help you as well. Let me ask you about a couple more things while we're wrapping up. So your Instagram account is really good. I love your Instagram account. Uh, you, you you do a lot of uh, news clips. You show a lot of things. You just bring attention to something. One of the things that, that I saw on your, on your account was people going to see Sound of Freedom and being told that the air conditioning doesn't work or canceling tickets beforehand. And, and then they go in anyway and they're like, the air conditioning's working fine. Apparently, this is, I feel like a, I feel like a maniac saying this, but apparently it's happening at a lot of places that it's not just yeah. a one off. I mean, can That's you speak to that? Is this true? This is That's nuts. what I'm seeing too. I mean, I, again, uh, you know, if, if you're not following me already on Instagram, uh, David J. Harris Jr., you got to have that J in there. But uh, on any social media platform, it's David J. Harris Jr. But I posted that video and I asked the question, is this happening in anywhere else? So many comments. I've had friends texting me. A good friend of mine texted me from California. He lives down in Orange County. I think he's in Newport. He said that he went in. uh, He bought tickets for a three o'clock showing. They canceled his tickets. They refunded his money. He showed up and they said, well, we canceled that because there was whatever. I forget the problem. And then he's, they said, well, you can go in the six o'clock if you want, but there's still a problem. There, there's all these problems. I have another video. I haven't even posted it yet where the people are in there waiting for the film to start. It doesn't start. 
The guy comes in and he says, sorry, it's going to be at least another half an hour. Um, we, we have to download the movie. They have to <laughs> download the movie? But we're going to give everybody in here a free ticket. You can stay or you go. It's just like, what, what is happening? There, there seems like there's a very concerted effort to try to get people not to watch the film, which means we got to watch the film. Yeah, I, I never in a million years, David, I never imagined that a film would be like just red pilling everybody. I mean, a film would be like, I just can't believe I'm talking so much about this film. I've got nothing to do with it. I didn't even know it was a culture war. I just wanted to go see it. I was like, this is really good. Boom, the culture war starts. I mean, this is absolutely insane. Another thing that you post quite a lot, you'll post videos of, of like random acts of violence. And you've been doing this longer than me. So I'm just curious, since you began 2016, as you said, is it the case that these random acts of violence are in fact ramping up that are that we are becoming a country of just lawlessness and the more lawlessness that happens it's ramping up on every side whether we're talking about the pornography the sex trafficking the violence the just people coming down just smack somebody in the head some knock some old woman out on the side of the street absolutely john it is it is increasing look at the data you know and i i'm the biggest proponent of do your own research right i constantly say that do your own research. If, if people would just do their own research and look at the statistics of violent crimes, uh, robberies, homicides, do them in, and do it in certain areas, districts, states, uh, it is predominantly in blue Democrat states. And the reason is because the, the DAs, not always, there's some uh, in, in uh, red states too, but then you got to look at who the district attorneys are. When there are when there's a district attorney, attorney that's a progressive uh, leftist that is weak on crime, like uh, in Los Angeles, uh, in Chicago, in New York, and uh, there's there's some in Dallas, Texas, when district attorneys, uh, and we'll take it a step back in a second, but these DAs are being soft on crime. They're giving slaps on the wrist for uh, for violent crimes. It's, it's to the point where I forget which state it is right now. I'm pretty sure it was Chicago, but it was like a person literally could rape somebody and not go to jail, get let off. In California, it's, well, you can steal up to $1,000 and the cops won't even come. Yeah. Uh, it's all these lenient, le more leniency and more leniency and more leniency, which is lawlessness. And so criminals are going to take advantage of it. That's what criminals do. Uh, they don't follow the laws. They don't. That's why they're criminals. And they don't care what the laws are, what the rules are. So you literally just had 50 Cent, right? Curtis Jackson, who's, I don't know how much he's worth, whatever. People know who 50 Cent is. But he literally just came out and said, Los Angeles is over. He's like, it's done. It's toast because they they implemented they they re uh, uh, they reinstituted the no bail policy, which means for a whole plethora of crimes, the people get they don't even get bail. They, they don't have to. They don't have to get bail. They just they just get let out. They don't even need bail money. Yeah, so when you, when you when you when you let that kind of lawlessness and evil go unchecked, you're going to have an increase in all the in all the things that we're talking about rapes violent crimes murders shootings uh, all of it and we're seeing it we're seeing it predominantly in democrat states you know it's funny uh how many christians want to stay on the sideline and not get political yeah. you know the problem with that is it's because christians haven't been political that we're in this mess in the first place mm. I, oh i totally agree with that brother that's that's why yeah. Take Christians who have a morality based on scripture in the Bible that, that gives us and teaches us how we're supposed to act, treat people, and be held accountable. Take those individuals out of politics, out of the out of the position and ability to be able to create and write laws and legislation that govern the land. And now you have godless people that are writing legislation to be the law of the land, like in California, where they literally just voted down a bill that would have made uh, perpetrators of sex trafficking children, a felony, mm. a felony. They, the bill was somebody's caught trafficking children. It's a felony. California voted it down. Nah, we, they don't need to be given a felony. Yeah. It's like July 4th comes out and all the Christians that, that hate America are like posting all the, how terrible the country is. You know, slavery was, the, I'm, I'm like, do you know what's around the corner with China? I mean, I, I just cannot see any benefit 
of you bashing the country, whether you like America or not, whether you understand history or not, you know what the alternative is? It ain't looking so good, but yeah. that's the way it goes. You know, we, I think you're right. I think we got to pray and we got to keep sp spreading truth, you know? So that's why I want to talk about this sound of freedom thing. I, you know, there's a lot to pray about brother. So keep up, keep up the fight. It's good to chat with you. I appreciate you coming on the show. I'm sure that everybody loved it. And one last time, if you want to give us a plug for the book or your social media, tell people where to find you. Yeah, the book, uh, A Town Worth Defending, you can get it at bravebooks.com. Uh, my social media handle on all my social media is David J. Harris Jr. And if you like the shirts, if you agree, we got to leave the kids alone. Tell them to leave the kids alone. This design actually is half price right now. It's 14 bucks uh, and some change at lovethatmerch.com. Uh, so that helps me do what I do in the fight to just not have to get a day job, sell a few shirts and uh, and fire up some people and give people talking points uh, reasons to strike up a conversation about something that things that need to be talked about. That's what I do with my shirt. So appreciate you, John. I thank you for, uh, for having me on the show and I'm glad I'm thankful that you're in the fight. It's an honor to be in this fight with you, brother. We will, we will make it and we will take our country back in 2024. I believe that. I hear you. Thank you so much, brother. Peace. Thank you, brother. God bless. Read the Bible.